Hello, and welcome to another edition of What's Next. Last week, uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago I mentioned to you um, that the governor of Georgia had received uh, a state uh, amount of the stimulus package that the president had uh, gotten passed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the state of Georgia was given six billion dollars. The governor refused to accept it. Last week, I mentioned to you that the governor did accept one billion dollars of the six billion dollars. Now, his reason for refusal was that he would felt that over the period of time he would have to raise taxes in order to continue the state budget after the stimulus money had expired. That was mostly because of uh, of the unemployment and the, and the money was basically uh, earmarked. It wasn't earmarked, but it was it was designed to go to uh, employment compensation. Now, what uh, we find, and I mentioned last week, that the governor was going to have to raise taxes anyway. Well, this week, guess what? He raised taxes. But he didn't raise taxes on mill or taxes on on property or this type of thing. He raised taxes on goods, namely cigarettes. Cigarette taxes up. Tremendously up. And I think uh, alcoholic beverages taxes are up. So the state taxes on cigarettes have increased. The state taxes on alcohol, if it hasn't now, it will. Because I think it's designed to get luxury items. This is something, and I think that's a good thing because it was also purported that there will be state taxes on food that you buy in the grocery store. I thought that was ridiculous. There's too many people purchasing food that doesn't have enough money to get what they want anyway. Anyway, today we have on our show a lovely young lady, uh, Miss Elsa Celestine. And I'll, I'll, I'll let her tell you about it because she is uh, a wonderful woman. Miss Celestine, thank you for joining me on my show. Thank you, sir. And tell the audience a little bit about yourself before we get started. Good afternoon. My name is Elsa Celestine. I'm a 23-year educator. Um, previous, I just moved here from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Broward County, after working there for 17 years as an educator. I'm a certified, I'm certified in gifted ESOL and primary ed, as well as I have my specialist in ed leadership. After moving here in 2003, I decided that the education system did a big change. So with a team, 12 other members and community leaders, we decided to open Stars Academy, which is now located in Riverdale, Georgia, as a state charter school. Now, let me, yeah, right, I want to let everyone know, Scholars Academy is a state-operated, state-run, state-funded charter school here in Clayton County. Now, continue. As a state charter school, we're funded <coughs> directly from the state and we're not affiliated with the Clayton County Board of Education system. We do have our own governing board and the state funds everything that we need. Our operational fund money comes directly to us mm -hmm. and we take care of all our operational expenses as well as the salaries, everything to do with the school. We have a five-year contract with the state and the school is an expeditionary learning school which is a project-based elementary mm -hmm. school from, kin from kindergarten grades K through five. Good, good. Now, what you're basically saying is Clayton County Board of Education has nothing to do with your school. No, they do not. They no. can make any rules or regulations on your school. No, our school is directly a state charter school, so everything comes directly from the state and everything is governed from our board. We have a governing board that the school has and we deal from that board. And that board, as well as myself, we and the community and the parents, we decide what to do. But the board is our running person. That's the one we go to, our governing board. 
no. with the Red Cross School. No. What is what, what do your curriculum um, entail? Okay, our theme for Scholars Academy is global education. We focus on environmental science and multicultural studies. Our target audience or target group is Clayton County residents. Anyone who lives in Clayton County can attend our school for free. As a charter school, it is a public school, so all the children attend free. There's no tuition whatsoever. They don't have to pay anything. They pay nothing at all. We supply all the books, everything that they need, just like a regular public school. But I but thought a charter school was like a private school. No, I'm afraid not. The public school mm -hmm. is different. Charter school is we have a contract with the state to say that we're going to, our goals are school improvement as well as student achievement. And we have the contract with them saying that we're going to do the same thing that the public school is doing. The only thing we have a little different is our the uniqueness about us is that we're global education. And so we do have that theme. And so because we have a theme, we have things that we're obligated to do at our school. We have an extended day, so our day is from 7.45 to 3.30. Our instructors, we are children are taught Spanish twice a week, and we have a smaller class size right now in our school. So it's a little different, a little different. It's not a private school. It's, it looks like a private school because our kids do wear uniforms. Our kids wear uniforms, as you can see right here, mm -hmm. and our kids wear yellow and blue. And that's our uniform, and it's definitely a part of what they have to do. So the parents have to buy the uniforms. Now, I know there are a lot of people asking right now, if we got a public school already here in Clayton County, been running for all the long time it's been to Clayton County, why do we need a public a charter school? Because a charter school is a choice. Everyone needs choices. And a charter school gives that choice to the parents, because not all children learn the same way. Every child learns differently. And our school is a project based, again, using the sciences, using the multicultural study. And that gives the parents a choice. And in the system, we are allowed to have choices. So a charter school does provide the choices to the community. So now, are the things you're teaching in your school, uh, does the parent have an uh, input as to whether their kids can teach, be, you know, be taught those things? Well, everything is aligned with the Georgia performance standards. Everything we do, we have to go back to the standards. The books that we use are research-based documents we use, so we know. We have a curriculum facilitator as well as, and she's also a reading specialist. So she works with, our, she work with the teachers and as well work with the children. We work with our children, we go in, we find exactly where they are, work with their weakness to build up their weaknesses. We have a base of a flexibility, so our time schedule is flexible to see if this child needs, if they need more services, we can provide the services for that child to bring the child up. Again, keep in mind, our state goals are student achievement and school improvement. Presently, George is not in the best standards with education along with within the 50 states, and our goal is to bring that up to par so that our school could be a part of moving Georgia up the level from where they are right now. Now, since Clayton County schools are not accredited, mm -hmm. uh, would your school be accredited? Um, the accreditation of Clayton County really focuses on the early childhood as well as the high school. Mm -hmm. Scholars Academy has nothing to do with Clayton County at, its, at all. And we know we can't stop new people from coming into Clayton County. And what Scholars Academy does, what can do with Scholars Academy is that that's the school that parents have no concern about. They know that this school, the children are going to be met, no problem with accreditation, no problem with anything. They come in, we work with what we have to work with, our true curriculum and our children, and they have no, no fear with that. There's nothing to do with, like I said, we have nothing to do with Clayton County, but we do have to work with our own guidelines, and we do have to work with our objectivities and our goals. And they're state approved? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, your guidelines and, and, and these type of things, do you say that the students are from K through 5? From K to 5, yes, sir. After they finish the 5th grade, would they be accepted into the 6th grade in Clayton Public School? In the Clayton County Public School, because right now Clayton County is working on putting in some schools into place, some other charter schools, and hopefully everything is going to turn out right with Clayton County. But Scars Academy, our goal eventually will be, and our parents have been asking us that question as well, and putting in place a middle school and moving upward. But mm -hmm. presently, we only go to fifth grade. Now, would they be able to go to, say, out of uh, the county to another school, say, in Atlanta or Fayetteville or someplace like that? If they move. The only thing is, as a public school, we're kind of bound to our region, so we're, we're stuck in Clayton. But if they move, 
as a public school, they can just move and everything will be fine. In fact, our expectation is so high that we expect them to go to the other school on a higher grade or you know, higher level than they are leaving the school so, system. So then you have to live within Clayton County in order to have your student in your school? Presently, yes. Okay. Presently, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And they go free? Yes, they're free. They do not pay. The only thing they pay for is a uniform, and they do have the best teachers. We do have 14 staff members, seven highly qualified teachers, administration staff, a Spanish teacher, as well as a special education teacher. Now, uh, you, you, do your school have room for more people now? Oh, yes, we do. And in fact, right now, we're ready for um, enrollment for the next coming school year. And it we begins do when? Right now. Now okay. until April. It's open enrollment, and if a child or parents moving into Clayton County and they have concerns about the Clayton County school system, we're right there they for them. The yes, they can. Yes, they okay. can. Mm -hmm. All right. Now that I mean, like the, we like we're glad that you uh, you pointed that out. All right. Now, um, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about your school? Well, I like to say Scars Academy is a really is an expeditionary learning school. It means we're project based. Everything is done project based. We really stimulate our environment is a learning environment that's going to stimulate the children for academic achievement, ownership of learning. A lot of times our children come to school and that ownership of learning is lacking. So we really enforce that with our children, that they understand the reason for education. So education ties into real life experiences that connect to what they're going to do in the future and become global learners. Now, I must, I must uh, confess, I've been to your school. Mm -hmm, you have. And I know there is no behavior problems whatsoever. No, we None have none whatsoever. And thank you for that. And I have been uh, in Clayton County Public School for uh, since 1998, and I've seen huge amounts <laughs> of disruption and behavior problems. So I will I will commend you first of all for for the work that you're doing and for the school. Thank you. And I will say, if there's anybody who wants to take their kids over to your school, that would be a wonderful idea and a wonderful thing to do. If I had a child who was in uh, kindergarten to fifth grade, I'd bring them to your school. Thank you very I'd much, I'd say sir. that right now. I and appreciate that. Thank you so that. very much for being on my show. And, uh, and thank you for your time. Now, we are going to pause for a brief moment. And I have another guest uh, that will be coming forth after we... Take a break. Well, hello again, and we're back. Uh, a few minutes ago, we had um, Miss Celestine on with uh, from Scholars Academy. Uh, I wanted to let you know if you were interested uh, in contacting Scholars Academy, you can do so on the web at www.scholarsacademy.com, or you can call 
The number is 770-75, is that six or eight? It's six, I think it's 756-9710. That's 770-756-9710. Now, I have uh, my other guest on the show, Mr. Michael. How are you doing? Dr. George, I'm doing just Mr. fine. Michael Dowdell. Thanks for asking. Yeah. How are you doing today? Doing great, sir. How about yourself? Uh, Mr. Dydell, I do believe if he's not a pastor, he should be. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Mr. Dydell, let, let the people know a little bit about you. Well, what we're doing, are we're beginning to start our weekly broadcast on NewRoadsVideo.com. It will be apostolic, prophetic-based teaching. This is not something new. It's not a new dimension of teaching. It is basically the foundation of the Bible teachings that most people have not had the exposure too. So, but uh, relatively, we're going to be relating to the modern day emphasis of the church, uh, the saints, and not necessarily church members. We're not trying to denounce or war any of the things that are basically the norm for religion and for believers. But we're going to deal with the aspects of the new covenant, the Catholic, and a prophetic dimension to the government of God for the church. Now, will this be faith based? It is faith based because it's biblical based. Mm -hmm. All right. Will it be uh, any particular denomination? No, it's interdenomination, okay. and it's ecumenical. And it's ecumenical. Right. And its emphasis, we're going to relate to all, uh, because in my ministry training, I've been a United Methodist associate pastor. I've been uh, with what we call the uh, Pentecostal mainline churches. I've been with the uh, so-called charismatic Pentecostal churches. I've been a Baptist minister. Uh, I've been even studied with the Jehovah Witnesses, just to show the spirit of partiality, is not among those who truly walk in the prophetic. It's impartiality as we relate to all beliefs. And there's only one faith, but many people call different religions faith. So we do have to deal with the area of the dimensions of belief that people have as it relates to their faith in their religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, you just mentioned to the audience that uh, you will, will be joining us here. Yes, at, sir. At uh, NRV TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will be on what? What time and date? Were well, you tentatively, doing? we set the time for 5 o'clock p.m. every Friday, I believe. And that particular uh, time slot may change. And if so, we will announce it on our next and up and coming program. So we're beginning to program next Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. And if there are any changes, we're going to let the television audience know and those who are watching know okay. what will be the dates and the time. Okay, good. Now, it just so happens that uh, Mr. Dydell, I don't know whether. Many of you know, but I think you do. Mr. Madonnell used to host the show. Uh, tell them about that. Well, we've had extensive experience with TVN. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done any shows here locally in the Atlanta area, but in the Jacksonville, Florida area, we were there at the affiliate station, TVN, in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. Florida, mm -hmm. where we did a weekly teaching broadcast mm -hmm. on the apostolic and the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I was a regular up until this past year on TV57, which is a local Christian-based yeah. station yeah. here in the Atlanta area that airs Monday through Fridays. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then some people in the Atlanta area should ha have had some opportunity to meet you or, or listen to some of your words. Well, yes, George. I've, I've come out of one of what was at one time considered the most dominant Pentecostal church in the Decatur area, where we had mm -hmm. we were the first church that had over 30,000 members in this area back in the mm -hmm. 80s. And we were the ones that basically imparted the dance and, and drama and, and, you know, relating to the gospel message. This particular church is now not as affluent as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But at uh, one time back in the 80s, it was the dominant force. At that time? Yes, in charismatic okay. ministry. And we're going to get it to be again. Yes, now, sir. I seem to think that we have a question, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have uh, two questions uh, for Mr. Dowdell. Uh, the first one is, why is there a need for denominations? And the second one is, will Mr. Dowdell be on TBN anytime soon? Well, let me answer the first question. Uh, there was never any need for denominations. As you can see, the word itself and what it means, we basically come to understand that word, Joyce, through our arithmetic. Uh, language where we say finding this letter or taking it to the lowest denomination. Mm -hmm. So anytime you talk about denominations, you're not talking about something that walks in the power, the authority of biblical principles. You're talking about something that is really expressed in its lowest denomination or its lowest character or authority. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily biblically based because in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, there are no denomination. There are just churches. 
uh, the second question uh, in relationship to when will I be back on TBN. We're not necessarily seeking to be on TBN as a ministry team or a teaching ministry at this time. We're looking to uh, develop our ministry teaching more so on uh, New Roads video, New Roads yeah. video dot com, the television network, and I have also become an affiliate member of HelloWorld.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. All right. So these things, these particular entities, have opened up the opportunity for us to go and be able to teach without having any kind of obstructions or without coming against the mainline denominations, uh, where it seems like we're beginning to uh, shake up the kingdom or the kingdom of men and religion. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, thank you so very much, Mr. Dowdell, for being on this show. Thank you for having me. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, your first show on this station. Thank you, George. Now, by the way, I'll answer that a little bit more of that, that caller's question. Mr. Dowdell, instead of being on TVN, he will be right here with us on NRV TV every Friday at 5 o'clock. Now, thank you, Mr. Dowdell, and... Uh, Thanks for coming. Thank you again. Okay. Oh. We have another guest who will be coming in just one moment. Again, welcome back again now to what's next. Now, we have um, with us uh, Mr. Claudia Phillips. Uh, he's going to give us our community updates. And welcome again, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Claudia Pepper. Yeah. Now, you uh, had some information you wanted to share with us? Yes, just wanted to give a brief community update. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thanks once again for inviting me back on the show. Good. What's welcome. next? It's always good to have an opportunity to speak to the community. Uh, as a president of the community, we met during our normal sessions on yesterday, which is the second Saturday of every month. We meet at 1 p.m. at the Church of Nazarene right at Point South Parkway and Highway 85. On yesterday, our focus was basically on getting a sign replaced along Point South Parkway where all the subdivisions are listed. That sign has decayed to the point where you can barely see the name of the subdivisions. So we're focused right now on getting that sign replaced as a community. And Elon Farm is leading the pack in order to have that sign replaced. And what we're going to do, you have a question right quick? Yeah, is there a sign of Brandon, was that Brandon Hill? Brandon Hill, right past right. Brandon Hill? Yeah, yeah, right. right. The sign has about eight different subdivisions on it, and we're going to try to mobilize all the communities along Point South Parkway, starting with Brandon Hill, going all the way up to Wellington, which is the last one on the left-hand side, and coming back down and picking up those other subdivisions along the way. And also we have uh, recruited the help from Peachtree Corners, which is a brand new townhouse subdivision right behind CVS. They're also going to be influential in helping us replace that sign as well. Now the total cost for this sign replacement and everything is roughly $1,000. So we're focused right now on getting that sign replaced between now and Easter. Easter weekend, Good Friday weekend, the sign hopefully will be replaced with a brand new sign to make our community look a lot better. Well, that's good. Uh, is there any further information you want to share with us? Well, we would also like to thank all the people that have been on your show earlier. Uh, the scholars of Kings sound like a great, a great addition to our community. We're looking yeah. forward to working with them as well as the faith-based community information that was brought forth as well. As a community, we're going to embrace those organizations and look forward to meeting and working, working with them. Thank you very much, Mr. Phillips. Thank you. And thank you for being with us on What's Next. Today, we have shared uh, a good deal of information with you. I hope you can digest it all. Um, but, but I do want to wrap it up by saying, uh, as Mr. Phillips mentioned, uh, the Scholars Academy, which is here in Clayton County on Riverdale, uh, did give you the website, but I'll give it to you again. It's www.scholarsacademy.com. It's www 
scholarsacademy.com. Anyway, um, what we're going to have next week on my show next week will be Ms. Shelley Chapman and Ms. Akia Richards. Ms. Chapman, I believe, has something to do with beauty and, and, and uh, skin oil ornaments. And Ms. Richards, I believe, is a, a poet or a book writer of some sort. I don't know exactly whether that's true or not, but uh, be with us next week on What's Next. We want to thank you so very much for watching. And until next week, thank you and have a good week.